Hello, you wonderful people. It's been a while since I made a video, but I wanted to get back into the flow of things. I hope you're all doing wonderful. But in today's video, I wanna share with you a project that I started working for because I wanted to make more tutorials, but I wanted to make a cool way for you to experience those tutorials, as well as make this project open source so you could contribute if you like, you could fork it, do whatever you like. And this is what I have so far. This is going to be the new Coding After 30 website and here you have your courses button where you could find cool courses. This is still work in progress, so I didn't actually add a lot of stuff to it, but I just wanted to co like showcase it. It's absolutely free for you to use, but if you click a view course, it's gonna ask you to sign in. I have a test user that you can just sign in to take a look. Again, not much going on, but you could also sign up. Uh, when you sign in, you will have this a view of uh, your courses that you selected. And what's cool, if you go to courses here, you could either like or unlike. It's not like like or dislike. It's more like, do you want this course to be added to your dashboard of all the courses that you're taking? So if you go link here on your avatar, it's gonna take you to your courses. And notice because this course is liked, it's inside my dashboard. If I unlike it, it will disappear. So. If you go to our courses, this is gonna have all the available courses. If you wanna add it to your dashboard, you could click the like button, boom, or you could just click view course and it's gonna take you to this view. Obviously I didn't add any data to this. This has just dummy data to test, but if you take a look, you'll see the first uh, lesson here. We have our little player. Underneath, you'll see some details and helpful resources. And here on the right, you'll be able to see some notes around the video, code snippets. You could also adjust this. So you could see more of the video if you want. If you wanna just look at the notes, you could do that. You could move it as much as you want or if you just wanna watch the video. So I wanted to create a useful way for the community to check out the tutorials that I wanna make because I wanna start focusing making tutorials. So what I wanna do is basically walk you through this project quickly and show you how you could set this up locally to try it out, use the code as a starting point and build something cool. Or if you want to help me build this out, you can do this as well because you'll be able to make commits to the repo, not saying that I'm going to accept everything and every feature because, you know, I do have a certain uh, feature set that I want to keep for this application. I don't want it to grow too big to a point where I can't manage it, but you're definitely welcome to clone this project and use it in whatever way that you want because it's open source. And so let's take a look how we could set this project up locally so you could play with it on your own. And before taking a look at the project, what technologies am I using? For the front end, I'm using Remix. It's a less bloated framework. Next.js is pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. But for this particular project, I decided to go with Remix. It is fantastic, makes data loading pretty seamless and I just love it and so I decided to use it and if you've never tried it this will be a great opportunity for you to try something else and of, and of course for our back end I'm using Strapi an amazing headless CMS I've been using it for many years I've been using it so much that they eventually hired me so yes I do work for Strapi so some people might say I'm biased but I've used it way before I got the job there and the cool part right now we are testing out Strapi 5 it's in our release candidate and so I decided Decided to take this opportunity to try out some of the newer features of Strapi 5. Now, release candidate means that it's still being tested, and so you'll probably might find some bugs. And if you do, you could always let us know. But I just wanted to get started with Strapi 5 because why not? And for the UI, I did use Revap. It's a paid service, but I did not want to create all of the front end from scratch. I wanted to get some code snippets, and this is something that allowed me to do because, for instance, if I want to take a look at this component, I could click this button and I have all the code available to me that I could modify. What's awesome about Revap that it's based on ShadCN UI with Tailwind. So Shetsian UI has amazing components that are fully customizable that you could take advantage of. And what's awesome by using Reweb, Tailwind, and Shetsian UI, Vercel has this amazing service. For instance, here I could say create a sign in page. It's going to go ahead and mock up this sign up page for you using AI. Now, I'm not saying that you need to trust AI to build everything for you because it's not going to be perfect. But what's awesome, you do have a starting point. 
that you could use. For instance, this looks good enough. You could take a look at the code. And if you look at the code, it's using Chat CN UI components. So this is a great way for prototyping or getting started. So I'm using all those cool things to build this project. So finally, now let's set this project up locally so we could see what we're working with. You could find the links to the repos in the description below. We're going to start with our backend. Now, in my computer, I have GitHub CLI installed, so that's what I'm going to use. But you could clone this project just taking this URL and typing git clone. So I'm going to go ahead, copy my command. And here in my terminal, I have a root folder called Trappy Project. And this is where I'm going to clone the backend. And I'm going to call this server. Click Enter. It's going to go ahead and clone the repo. So go ahead and CD into the server. I'm going to clear the screen and we're going to yarn yarn to install all the necessary dependencies. It's going to go ahead and do its magic. Now, once everything is done, if I type LS, you're going to see I have this seed data file. This basically has some dummy data. And for us to import this, let me show you how it's done. I'm going to clear the screen. And if I run yarn strappy import help, it's going to show all the commands that we have. So we could use the file flag to point to the file that we want to import and run the command. So here I'm going to run yarn strappy import, use the file flag, and we're going to point it to our seed data and click enter. Yes, uh, since we don't have any data, we don't have to worry about deleting anything. So click yes. And yes, you will find this error and I should have remembered that. So let's open our project in VS Code. And the fix for this is very easy. What it was complaining about is that we don't have the environmental variable set up. If you take a look here um, to the .env.example file, you could just copy what's in here and create a new .env file and paste in the appropriate variables. So now if I run the same command, it is not going to complain. We're going to click yes, and it's going to go ahead and import the data. Once the data is imported, we could run yarn develop, and we're going to be greeted with this admin page. Go ahead, create your first admin user. I'm going to do this here. Paul.bratslavsky at strappy.io. Make sure you pick a secure password like monkey1234. Could never go wrong. There we go and click let's start and boom, you're going to be greeted with your dashboard. If we click here, you could see that we have our basic collection types and you could see we have a dummy course here, nicely formatted for us in the admin area. We have our one lesson that you could find here and we have our test user, we have me, and then we also have a user profile that's associated with the user. So whenever you save courses to your that you are taking, they're going to be saved in your user profile under followed courses here. And of course, I'm going to talk more about Strapi, but if you're new to Strapi, you could take a great course that I made, which covers all the basic called Strapi V4 Crash Course. Even though we're using V5, a lot of things are very similar. So this will be a great starting point or just continue following along with me as I continue building these things. So now that we know that our backend is running, let's go ahead and set up our front end. I'm going to go to our repo. And again, all the links in the description, I'm going to go ahead and copy this link. And I'm going to just keep Strapi running here. And I'm going to create a new tab. And here inside the new tab, I'm going to go ahead and paste the command. And I'm going to call this client. Click Enter. It's going to go ahead and pull our project, let's CD into our client, and we're going to run yarn to install all the dependencies. I'm going to open my project in VS Code. And what we're going to do is take a look under the env example. And here I actually forgot to remove the API key and the link to my deploy project, which is fine because there's nothing really interesting on there. And there's not much you can do outside of use it to consume the API. But with that being said, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and replace this with your local data. So first thing you want to do is we want to point to our local Strapi instance, which is running on localhost 1337. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And here I'm going to paste it in and then make sure that you remove this trailing slash, we don't need it. And now we need to create an API token 
for the public data that we want our users to be able to see without having to log in. So inside your Strapi project, go to settings. We're going to go to API tokens, click add a new API token. And the public items that we want to allow our users to see uh, are going to be our courses and lessons. So let's click select. Let's click custom. And we're going to call it read only. You could name this whatever the heck you want. And for duration, we're going to set unlimited. And under courses, we want to say we want to find one and find all. We're going to do the same thing for lessons, find one and find all, everything else. We're going to keep the same, click save. And now you're going to go ahead, copy this key, click save. And in our front end project, let's go ahead and replace it with our own token. And by the way, you want to make sure that you copy this into its own .env file. Don't use the example file. So I'm going to say .env and I'm going to paste this in. Once this is done, you should be able to run Yarn Dev and it should start your front end project. So let's see if this works. And here you should be able to see your front end loading. If you go to courses, you will have our demo course. If you go to sign up, you could click on sign in. You should have the test user. If you click sign in, it should sign you in. If you go to our public courses and I should improve the layout, if you click like, that's gonna add this to your dashboard or you could just click view course and you're gonna see your course here available. So now we have our front end and back end hooked up, which is pretty awesome. Are there bugs in this code? Probably, and that's the whole purpose of building something from the beginning is that it's an iterative process, but I wanna do it publicly, share with you the community for those of you who want to jump in and build this with me, or those of you who just want to use this to consume, to watch the tutorials that I make. But with that being said, I wanna thank you so much for checking out this video. Really appreciate all of your support. It really means a lot to me. And if you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, who cares? Hit the hate button, I don't care. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. But with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.